I see somebody's been putting the finishing touches on Freddy's face. Here's a look at the neck of toys. Nightmare on Elm Street Ultimate Freddy Krueger 2022 reissue figure. Nancy is having grisly nightmares. Something monstrous wants to kill her. Meanwhile, her high school friends who are having the very same dream are being slaughtered in their sleep by the hideous fiend of their own shared nightmare. When the police ignore their explanation, she must confront the killer in his own shadowy realm. While Nancy and her friends are in search of new dreams, I was in a search for a new Freddy from Nightmare on Elm Street Part 1. I'll get to the reasons more in a moment, but I did end up finding the 2022 reissue over at Entertainment Earth site. If you guys are interested, I think this guy had sold out, but he has been restocked again. You can click the link down below in the video description. That link also, by the way, will not only be able to get you the Nightmare on Elm Street Freddy Krueger, but also using that link will save you 10% on anything that's currently in stock over on their site. I'm going to grab now the tape measure and see how tall the figure stands. Now, this figure is about six and three quarters of an inch in height, or he's going to be about 17 centimeters tall. So my search for Freddy really had more to do with the fact that I had this original one from 2014. In fact, I still have the box for it. But unfortunately, I have a lot of the accessories missing. Now, this isn't the first Freddy we've looked at here on this channel for the Nightmare on Elm Street first film. I've actually looked at the earlier Freddy Krueger that even had the more stacked and lower legs that had no articulation. Now, that figure I still have, but I don't have most of the accessories that went along with this figure. A lot of the times, as I'm doing reviews, I may put some of the accessories to the side if I was looking for a figure and I was moving on to looking at something else. Well, sure enough, with this particular Freddy, I may have put some of the accessories over to the side and over the years of changing out the backdrops, I think some of the accessories went missing for this particular Freddy. So he was never really complete after that initial review. I have a few times just seen like one random piece here, like the mask, for example, that comes in clue with the figure. And I've always tried to put it back in the box, but like this Freddy is missing so many accessories. I also thought it was just prime time. His lower legs are also just becoming really, really loose as well. And I thought it was also a good time to get an updated paint scheme. Now, I don't know if necessarily I would say like the paint schemes done been has been done better here with the 2022 exclusive, now 22 re reissue, being of course that this is like now nine years later. I don't know if the paint has been necessarily improved. It def definitely does look better on the sweater, but I think it might be a little bit too extreme on his face. We're going to talk more about that in a moment. As I've also been yammering away, I did also want to bring in the reissue Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2 Freddy Krueger. And while unfortunately I think maybe too much was applied to paint on this one, not enough was applied to the 2022 reissue of Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2 Freddy's Revenge Freddy. Ready. So while I may not be able to bring in the accessories from that 2014 release of Freddy Krueger, I at least can deliver the accessories that come in clue with this figure. And then shortly after this review, anything that won't be then displayed on this figure on the shelf will then be immediately going back in the box. Not going to have that happen again. First, the accessories that come in clue with the figure. He comes included, first of all, with the phone. I'm your boyfriend now, Nancy. I mean, I love this phone. I mean, I love this phone when we got this included before as well. Sometime at some point, I hope a company releases a one-to-one -one scale phone that actually has the little wiggling tongue on the end of it. I would be picking that up right away. I think at one point it was teased. I think Heather Langlingcamp did want to take the phone home after the set shoot, but I would love to get myself an actual one-to-one -one scale. I mean, yeah, you could probably just fashion a tongue on the end of like an old 80s phone, but it's just not the same. I would love to have a little tongue that actually wiggles back and forth. Now, there is a phone cord. I haven't unraveled it. Actually, in fact, it's already wound up and molded this way so you, you can't actually do anything more than what it's doing right now you could in theory i suppose hang up the receiver but that's not going to be getting way of Fre getting rid of freddy at all i mean apparently all you really need to do is turn your back on freddy at least in the first film and he disappears that's all that was required of course we had to work a little harder to defeat freddy in later films but apparently that's all nancy had to do in the first film uh, the figure also comes included of course with this fedora now this fedora is sort of more Dated. I mean, obviously, the fedoras they would have had in the first two films, sort of more smaller, and the rim of the hat, obviously, in later films would be a little bit more flattened out. The earlier films sort of had the rim folded up like this. It does fit, obviously, on his head, and it fits on all the heads of the other Freddies that he comes, other head sculpts that he comes included with, and it looks okay. You know, it's not bad. I mean, obviously, this is a, a slightly more dated looking Freddy. I mean, they haven't perfected yet the scars. 
but at least like he gets himself like that classic look of Freddy already starting right away. I mean, obviously the only thing that's really missing is the fact that this version of Freddy doesn't have the stripes on his sleeves, but yeah, you can really see like where Freddy would have originated and it's really not that far different than the more Hollywood Freddy Krueger from like three onward. The head sculpt, of course, does have, again, the means to store the fedora, but then also he has two additional heads right over here. We're going to talk more about that in a moment. The figure also has the cutoff fingers that are squirting, oozing out the green slime, what do you want to call that, and just basically shooting out his finger. And I really like the way that this has been done. Unfortunately, again, I don't have the original hand on hand. Oh, I see what I did there. But I do like the way they've darkened the coloring of this. It actually kind of looks like this skin's been charred. Again, like the way they've colored this so brightly, it does really, I mean, obviously to have this figure on display with the figure with this hand, it really does look, from, even from a distance, like something ain't quite right with his hands. The figure also comes included with a skin mask. Now, again, this was all released with the original Freddy, so nothing really was included that was done differently. I think, in fact, the initial stactioned Freddy, with the lower legs not having articulation, may have had, I think, only just really the head, maybe two heads, and the fedora. Didn't come included with all these other accessories. Now, this skin mask can fit over top of existing Freddy's face. In fact, it's really so weird to kind of look this from the backside. You can kind of see the impression that Freddy made, literally and figuratively, as you can then take the fedora, which is, by the way, was very easy to remove. It's fairly soft plastic. But you can take the skin face and just attach it over top of Freddy's existing face. Never really a look that I would ever go with when displaying this guy on the shelf, but appreciate the fact always that NECA includes these accessories like they do. As a side note, sort of strange still, it seems, that all the Ultimate Freddies that have been packaged in boxes have never really come included with the extended arms. The original one did. The original one that we looked at here on this channel, and again, I would always encourage you guys to go back and watch those older reviews. Apologize by the dated nature of those older videos. But like the older Freddy would have had the extendable arms like he has in the alleyway scene where, of course, he's scratching the sides. I don't know why they haven't yet included this Freddy or re-released this Freddy with the longer arms. Maybe it just had something to do with the difficult time that collectors may have had just to remove the arms. They didn't want to worry about any pegs potentially breaking. So they just decided not to just, they just 86 it all together. But at some point, I would love to see this guy get a follow-up where he has, again, like the straighter arms added as well, the extendable arms, which again, kind of in a movie looks a little ridiculous because obviously they're just using fishing lines to sort of suspend the arms. But back then when I was first watching the movie, still pretty creepy. Now, the figure does have also alternate head sculpts. I guess before we do that, though, I want to show you guys what the defaulted head sculpt is. I have already several times removed this head and popped it and replaced it with the other ones, but I did want to put it back to the way I found it, just to show you guys what the defaulted head sculpt looks like when you get them out of the box. Now, I can't necessarily do the comparison from potato to potato, apple to apple. Why don't we compare potatoes to potatoes? Apples to apples, oranges to oranges, because obviously this head sculpt is going to be the alternate one that's just down there. So when I do replace that head sculpt down, down there... I'm going to then bring that other figure back in you. You can see the difference between the two. This head sculpt isn't terrible. I mean, obviously, I never really had a problem with the original head sculpt anyways. I will say, though, this scabbing of the red is maybe a little bit too vibrant. You can really see it isn't so much as bad on this one. But when we get to then the other head sculpt right down there, right down there, you can really see like how that scabbing of red is maybe a little bit too bright when it, they applied it to the face. Like, it, again, there's a lot of mileage. There's a lot of room to grow here when it comes to Freddy's design. He gets obviously much better as it gets to the later sequels. This earlier Freddy sort of has more of like a charred, I want to even say like a raw leather look to him. I like the head sculpt, but again, like if you wanted to have him displayed, for example, with a more sinister Freddy, there's also this head sculpt also as well. To change the heads out, by the way, it's very easy. You're just going to go ahead and remove the head from the provided peg. I'm glad also that they're using posts for these and not the original ball joints. I think, in fact, the original Freddy also had just this post system. But to change the head out, we're just going to pop the head back in place. Now, if you're having any problems to do this, the first few times that you're doing this, you might have a little bit of difficult time. You may always go the route of heating the head or heating the peg to help soften up the plastic. But you'll probably get a better idea of what I'm talking about here, how more extreme that red is here on, his, on Freddy's face. This is now a good opportunity to bring back in the original Freddy so you can see the difference between the two. Now, I, I understand, obviously, the figure's head sculpt from the initial release, this one, uh, well, not the initial release, but the 2014 release, maybe isn't as sharp on details as what we get with this one. The teeth are a little bit brighter, the eyes are a little clearer, but I will say one thing, I feel like the red is way too bright. I mean, in a way, like, I feel like this one handled it better by using a darker coloring, and maybe at the time that they felt that was the best way to paint Freddy, and I still feel like that maybe was the best way to paint Freddy. Like, his red is just way too bright. It needs to be at least two shades darker, I feel. Closer to, I feel, this 
and not as bright as what it is here. I unfortunately can't help but also notice that the end of Freddy's nose has some additional red. It's not supposed to be there. At least I don't think it's supposed to be there. He does have scabbing on the end of his nose, but I think it's supposed to be more skin tone. It isn't certainly supposed to be as bright red as what we get in right here. Uh, the Obviously, overlooking the fact that the red is way too bright, I think the face is still painted well. The teeth now get a chance to shine as grimy as those teeth may look, and his eyes look like they're a little bit sharper on detail. You can see some nice additional burning that he has on the side of his ear there. But again, like just spin this around, I feel like too much was applied. Too much red, or too bright of a red at least, was applied to Freddy's face. Now there's this head sculpt, or again, if you want to go even extreme, more extreme, then there's also the one that where he removes the face. Now underneath, of course, he has the skeletal face. And again, we just pop that off, just like that. And we'll just then replace it with this skull face. Now, I suppose one thing about having now multiple Freddies, I've mentioned this already before when we looked at the Ultimate Jasons, if you pick up more than one figure, there's always then the opportunity to then customize them, or in the sense that you can change the head sculpts off. So if you're going to have like multiples of the same figure on your shelf, I don't know why I'm doing it like this. But if you're having multiples on the shelf, at least then you have different looks of displaying the figure. More the gruesome certainly looking Freddy, but again, like a chance to really shine with the brighter coloring of the tongue on the inside. Maybe again, like the tongue is a little too bright, but at least you certainly do see it. The teeth again, top and bottom, as mangled as they may be, does look really good on this Freddy face. For me, at least, I think I'm going to still default back to this head sculpt. I don't feel like yet this is a Freddy that's really smiling and joking around, so I'm probably just going to stick with this head sculpt for now. But I think like all three head sculpts, even as old as they may be, were all superior heads to Freddy. I just feel like, again, like the paint is maybe a little bit too bright. That's all. So let's just pop this off for right now, and uh, maybe what we'll do is we'll put on... It's not going to be the one I'm going to go with, but I think for the rest of this review, I'm going to put on the more smiling, sinister Freddy. And again, the rules still apply when it comes to the fedora. You can easily just put the fedora on top of his head. As for the rest of the outfit, this Freddy, of course, does away with the idea of having stripes on his sleeves, not till introduced until uh, Freddy's Revenge, the second follow-up film. So again, like bringing back in the original Freddy that we looked at before, um, obviously the colors are a lot brighter here on the newer release, as I hope they should be. The greens and the reds stand a lot more than what they did before. I mean, obviously, like the older figure would have had a little more faded look to it. So like the sleeves and the coloring as a whole is done much better. The glove is also something, as you can see as well. Now, I can't tell whether, I'm sure the glove is, is, is exactly the same. You can see the placement of the blades look to be the same. But the coloring, again, I think is handled a lot better on the 2022 release than what we got here with the 2014 release. Same as well for applied on, on pants. Like the pants themselves, much darker here on the newer one, a little bit more faded on the original one. And the same also applies for the boots or the shoes that he's wearing as well. So I feel like color-wise, this still delivers a better looking Freddy. But I feel like in a way, again, just too bright on the face scabs. Looking at the articulation of the figure, let's go back to the head that has the scabs. Ooh, I don't know if I even want to touch those. Uh, let's just remove like the fedora for right now, just a little bit easier for me to kind of get in there with the head. The head being on a ball post allows the head to look back that far or look forward that much. You can also rock the head back and forth as well. And of course, yeah, you can rotate it all the way around as well. The shoulders are on hinges. Now the hinges don't really allow for a full 90 degree angle bend. Rather instead, you're only getting about what, like 45 degrees. You can also take as well the arms and rotate them all the way around. That's the same also on both the sides. He has only just a single hinge at his elbow, but at least allows the forearm to rotate back and forth. The hands as well rotate also all the way around. Freddy's body is on an upper torso ball joint, so you can rotate that all the way around. Like, this is also softer plastic. Maybe not as much soft here, although you can feel it is a, an overlay of plastic that they put over top of an uh, articulated body underneath. But he does have pretty decent articulation in the upper torso. Legs split out, they're on ratcheted joints. You can take the legs and move forward. You can move them back. And you can swivel at the top of the thigh. Single hinge only on the lower leg, but at least it allows the lower leg to rotate also as well. The feet move up and down only just by a little bit, and you can also rock the feet back and forth only just by a little bit. And again, he's got like really a bunching of pants down below here. Freddy is probably could have used maybe a, a size smaller, just a slight size smaller when it comes to the Freddy body, or at least when it comes to Freddy's pants. All in all, again, like it's a good looking figure. It's always the case, like you really want to see these figures, I think, on in hand. Go to a comic book store that certainly stocks these figures. And if you get the chance, first of all, you can also always pick up the boxes. And just to bring back in the box, I really should have brought the box in earlier. On the bottom here, you can see like the, the lot number. This is 966N021722. Always look at the last two numbers. Just to bring back in the original Freddy box, which I don't know again why I'm doing this so right now. You can see like the original lot number was uh, 
0.0214. So again, like there's a difference of nine years. The boxes are also going to be exactly the same. But I would always say too, when it comes to, if you're looking to get reissues, go always by those lot numbers, especially the last two digits. That will dictate the year of which the manufacturer was producing that figure. So again, like it'll tell us based on that, that there's a nine year gap between these two figures. In nine years, I feel like they have improved the coloring of this the sweater. I feel like they've improved the coloring of the glove. I feel like they've also improved the coloring of the pants. All darker, all richer, all sharper. But I feel like one thing, unfortunately, that suffers for this figure when it comes to 2022 at release, at least, is the fact that the scabbing on his face, especially on this one, because, of course, now he has red on the end of his nose. It looks like he's Rudolph, some demonic Rudolph that's saving Christmas. I don't think he's going to be saving Christmas. I think he's going to be slaughtering people on Christmas. But that's the only thing I feel like is a bit of a detriment to the figure. Like all of the rest of it really from like the neck down is fine. But I feel like in a way, like the original head sculpt, maybe while there could have been improvement when it comes to the applying of the paint, I feel like the head sculpt on the original one, the one that I had at least from 2014, might have done things just a tad bit better. Now, you know me, I'm all about picking up those NECA horror reissues. Whenever I get the chance, then I see a new reissue popping up over on Entertainment Earth in which I actually picked up this Freddy Krueger for myself. I always add it to my cart right away. This is, though, one of those cases where I didn't necessarily pick it up just because I wanted an updated paint, but I also wanted to get this figure as well to retrieve all of those missing accessories that I lost before with the other Freddy. Sure enough, I'm sure I've got it somewhere here. I mean, obviously, if I go down and check in the basement, maybe I may have one point put everything away in totes, but with how many totes I have and how many little tiny baggies of accessories, maybe I did put them away. But at the time of obviously doing this review, as it always is the case, I couldn't find them at all. I know somewhere lurking here in the dark dwellings of my house, there's probably also the long arm Freddy from that original Staction Freddy that had the little to no articulation in the lower half of his body. Uh, if I do get the chance to, re if I do get the chance, first of all, to find that figure, maybe I'll do a follow-up review on the original Freddy, so you guys can kind of see the difference between the two. Still, though, I'm surprised that NECA has yet to release an Ultimate Freddy Krueger from Nightmare on Elm Street that doesn't have the longer arms. Maybe again, it had something to do with just the construction of it. I mean, they already have the mold, so why didn't they just re-release a figure that had the longer arms? Still, though, when it comes to displaying the figure, I'm going to probably have maybe this Freddy displayed with him chopping off one of his, well, two little piggies. What's what's that one? Is that the little piggy that went home? Little piggy that ate roast beef? Doesn't really matter. It's the little piggy that had a bad dream. Speaking of bad dreams, though, I really would have a much better, much, much more worse of a dream looking at a Freddy Krueger that has the scabbing this red. I mean, in a way, it sort of is awkward to look at this, painfully to look at this, to see how bright the red of the scabbing is on his face. I don't know why they chose as bright of a red as they did. I think the colors could have been muted a lot more than what they were. For some reason, again, like this is just a lot brighter. And using again, like this Freddy, unfortunately, this particular head sculpt means as well that I'm going to have red on the end of his nose. And that's not good either. But what do you guys think of the 2022 reissue of Nightmare on Elm Street Freddy Krueger? Have you had the chance to pick up this one for yourself? Or what's the last lot number you have for your Freddy Krueger figure? Now, right now, everyone's going to be like scammering around. Where's all my Freddy Krueger boxes? Where else my Freddy Krueger boxes? I only just happen to have all my boxes right, like right next to me. You can't even see it. But like where I'm recording right now, all of my NECA boxes are just to the side of me. And that's easy for me then to retrieve them based on whenever I want to do the review. Couldn't have done, of course, having the Freddy over there with all of his accessories from the 2014 release, but at least we fixed things. I'd like to think we fixed things here with the 2022 reissue. Once again, if you guys are interested to get this one for yourself, as far as I know, it's still stocked over on Entertainment Earth. It just so happens to be, and I'm sure I have nothing to do with this at all. Every time I seem to do these reissue reviews, uh, that that particular item always seems to sell out over on Entertainment Earth. And I'm, I'm not taking any credit at all for that. It just happens to probably just be perfect timing. But again, if you guys are interested, uh, you can click the link down below that will take you on over to their site. Pick up the 2022 exclusive, 2022 reissue. It's not an exclusive, a reissue for yourself. And maybe also while you're there, if you'd like to get anything else, that link will take off 10%, promise, 10% off anything that's in stock over on their site. If you guys enjoyed this video, I want to hit it with a like. If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and certainly do want to stick around for more, if you haven't already done so, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and you're turning on as well the bell notification. We will have some more neck reviews coming your way. I don't know necessarily if they're going to be reissues or not, but there's always new content coming your way. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.